Hi everyone, I'm using a new camera mount today and it's not quite as stable as I thought it would be, so please bear with me. This is my replacement stencil from JLC PCB. I'm just going to open it up and have a look inside. <laughs> the board is much bigger than the stencil. That is a really good sign. Look at that. Now that's what I was expecting the first time. Okay, that is the way the board goes down. I'll just take that off and that off. I'm actually impressed that I might be able to make a jig out of this. It's just, it's really like condensed cardboard, packed in cardboard. Here's a board. Stencil goes on top of the board. It should be all lined up. Kind of like that. So, never used a stencil before, as I've mentioned a few times. What I'm going to have to do is set up a jig. And the way a jig would normally work would be you'd place a whole bunch of boards down. And these are obviously real production boards, so I probably won't use these. And you put one in the middle. And then you tape them down so they don't move, except for this one. That way you can slide them in and out. And then you tape down the stencil to line up exactly with that board. So that is what I'm going to do. But I need to get maybe some other PCBs to use. I don't want to use production boards to tape down. So let's get that done. Okay, I'm back. I put together a... a jig to hold everything in and I want to quickly just go through what I've done. So I'm using blue painters masking tape. Take my board out. So that's an actual board, production board. So what I did was I grabbed some of my old Revision 1 boards and I've stuck them down in place here. So I've got one across the top and one each across the side. And then on the bottom I've just got some proto board which is the same board, it's, it's FR4, so it's the same thickness, 1.6 mil, but I've left a little bit of a gap. And I can grab my boards, it's a very tight fit, but I can place them in there and it will not move at all. It's completely locked in place. And then I can fold that over. It's a bit hard to tell through the camera, but the stencil is lined up perfectly. And the reason I put the bit on the bottom is because I need it to sit flat. These other boards, they finish about here. And so what would happen is if I was scraping down, the stencil would fold at the bottom. I needed to keep it elevated. So the idea is that I've got just a, like a credit card size train met ticket here. So you get some paste on there and then you'd be able to just squeegee it down, getting all the paste in. The idea is to try to do it in one pass, but I don't know if that's gonna be possible. A couple of passes, squeeze it all the way down, and I should be able to carefully remove that and take this out. What I probably want to do is actually put something on the other side of this here to support it. Maybe just this little, to get my hands out of the way, little breadboard or something. So it sits up a bit higher, so the solder paste that's on the top here doesn't go onto the board. So that's my stencil jig. I am going to put some paste on and my plan today is to make five boards. I want to make four boards using the stencil and then I want to make one more. So there's one in there right now. I've got three more here and then I've actually got a board that looks like it's been scratched down the bottom. It doesn't look like there's, it's the scratches near any traces but the solder mask has definitely been removed and that's how it came in the packaging. I think it was the top one. I think this board's going to be okay. What I'm going to do though is use the stencil that I cut on my laser cutter. I might carefully remove this stencil for now and put the other one on. Or even just leave it on and just fold it up. Put the other one on and see if I can do one pass with the Mylar stencil and see how well that works. Because if it works okay, then I can include them in the kits. Okay, I need to go get my paste and we can start making some stencils. Back soon. I've got my solder paste. This is the 138 degree lead free solder paste that I showed in my unexpected mail video. I've got my card to apply it with. So I took the solder paste out of the fridge yesterday 
and here it is there. You can see it's quite wet and might not be able to see but it's moving around a little bit in there. It needs to be room temperature to use it. It's quite cold here today so I don't know if it's going to be wet enough but we'll give it a go. Now I've never done this before as I've stated a few times so I'm just preparing everyone for what could end up being a terrible result. Normally you'd have some type of applicator that you'd take it out and maybe put it along the top. I'm going to see if I can get some onto a card onto the corner and just use the card for that. This is all just up in the air. Ideally whatever is left over you should be able to scrape up and put back in the container. I'm not sure how I'm going to do that but anyway. Let's just get some on the card if I can. I was hoping to get it across the card but the card is too wide. That's a lot of paste by the way. I think that's a lot of paste. I should be able to do 10 boards with that I think. Okay. Wow, I'm not nervous at all. Here we go. I'm going to see if I can do it all in one pass. I'm just going to have to get my hands in the way. I apologise. I'm not sure what you're going to be able to see through this, but let's give it a go. You need to bend it down quite a lot to push it to give it pressure. Okay, that I am not going to be able to do it in one pass, it looks like. I think I've got it all. I don't want to keep going over the same areas again and again. Let's have a look. Wow. Okay, just make sure that my thing is there so it won't go onto the board. Let's put my card to the side right now and let's take this out and have a look at the application. I've got to be very careful with it that I don't grab the edges of it. Okay, I'm going to see if I can get the camera in focus. Oops, not even in the middle, in front of the camera. Not sure if you can see, but that's every pad with paste on it. And the paste is flat, which is exactly what we want, and it's covering all the pads. Wow, if that went on okay first time, I will be amazed. So right now what I need to do is, before I do anything else, I'm not going to do any more boards yet, I'm going to move this out of the way and I'm going to put some components on here and reflow it and test it and make sure that the application went on well, because I don't want to just start applying paste everywhere. But if that's all it took to get this on, that's about 50 times faster than me doing it with my eye extruder. And that's pretty cool. So let's go put some components on this board. Okay, I've got the camera quite close so you can see what I'm doing. So let's get these components on. Might be a bit tricky to do the camera so close, so just bear with me. And I have to get my arms in all sorts of contorted directions. Now what's nice about having the pads done from the stencil rather than me applying it through the eye extruder or through a syringe is that the pads are flat so when I place these components down they sit flat which is kind of nice I don't have to kind of jiggle them into place. With the application of the solder paste you could actually got they say a couple of hours but once you put the paste on the board you need to get your components on and get it reflowed before the paste starts to to dry. Okay it looks pretty good I'm going to quickly go through and check that all the LEDs in the orientation Probably a bit late for that, but if they are, it's going to angle this. Should straighten itself in the reflow. Okay, time for a reflow. I'll be back shortly. Okay, we're back, and uh, the soldering job looks fantastic. Let me just move that out of the way. Just have a look at this. It's the uh, <laughs> neatest soldering I've had so far. Everything's nice and straight. It came out really well. You can kind of see there pads there. So the question is, did it work? Let's find out. I've got my little test rig. I'm just going to uh, support the board on this side so it's nice and flat. We'll get my data pin, ground, and VCC. It's USB power on the side. Plug that in, lean these over, and let's hope they light up. Fingers crossed. Oh, what's going on? Have I not got good contact? Let's try it again, shall we? Oh, here we go. No. Okay, I think I've got a contact problem. Right, if I go this way. Here we go. 
This is a very bad test rig. I have to bend the pins to make sure they contact the board because I'm not soldering them on. I'm just poking them through. But as you can see, it's working. Got all the different RGB LEDs lighting up. Turn that off so I don't blind everyone. Unplug that. So there it is. We have a finished board to a stencil. Now it's time to try out the other stencil that I made with my laser cutter and the mylar. Back shortly. Okay, one good turn deserves another. So let's try doing the same thing again with the mylar. I've just moved this, this stencil out of the way for now. And what I also did was try to clean off as much of the paste as possible and scrape it back into the container. There's no point wasting the paste, it's very expensive. So I've managed to align the mylar, as you can see, it's not too bad. I've got that taped on as well, so I can kind of fold it over. It's nowhere near as rigid as the steel. And I'm a bit worried because of, as you can see, how far I went to the sides with a stencil that I might not have enough space on the side, but we'll find out. I've still got a bit of gunk on the card here, but it should be okay because it hasn't been long enough yet for it to dry. I'm going to grab some paste. As you can see, the paste I scraped back in. I'll see if I can actually grab some of that. Grab a bit more. Yeah. I think it's going to be much harder to clean off and, and get back off this stencil, so I'm going to try to use less if I can. And once again, I'm going to... I'm sorry that I'm kind of in the way, in the way of the camera, but there's not really a lot I can do. If I end up wasting a bit of paste on this, there's nothing I can do about it. But here we go. Wish me luck. Actually, let me scrap this off first. I guess that's a big blob. Okay. Here we go. Mylar, test one. Okay, that's much harder to apply. I can see there are a lot of pads I'm not getting. We need a lot more paste, I think. Let me see if I can reuse what's on here. much harder but at the end of the day all we want to do is get one bit of solder on every pad and I think we've achieved that let me just scrape this off if I can save as much of this as I can okay let's lift it up so that application was nowhere near as clean and I'm worried that it might have moved around a bit yeah, it has moved around, so you can see this board's quite tight to get, to get in. It can be quite tight to get back out again. So bear with me a second. Obviously every board is cut slightly differently. Let's get that onto my hand so I can focus it. So you can see that a lot of the pads, it moved around and that some of the pads are touching especially over here. But that shouldn't be a problem because the way the solder paste works is the surface tension, when it reflows, should push it or pull it onto the pad. So it's quite common that when people are putting or applying paste by hand by a syringe and reflowing, that they'll often just drag across two pads knowing that they should separate. So I'm gonna to try to populate this board and reflow it and see if it works. Back soon. Okay, we're back from reflow, and it looks pretty good, I have to say. I'll put it under my microscope, and everything seems to have reflowed really well. There's separation between all these pads on the LEDs that you can maybe see there. They were all kind of touching before. You might be able to see the capacitors as well. They're pretty good. So let's find out if... Come on, camera. Let's find out if it works. Let's go grab the test board again. Nice and close. Let's uh, get the ground in if I can. 
data BCC I'm gonna have to push it forward like I did last time let's get the power in okay and push it forward and let's see what happens hopefully it won't blind everyone whoop okay that's really blindy but they are all working whoops sorry yeah this look at the flare on the camera wonder what happened must have knocked a setting or something but there you go mylar stencil works reflowed nicely it was a, a little bit closer to the edges than the steel stencil but no problem the surface tension pulled it all back again let me just take that off so there we have it my last stencil steel stencil both work two successful boards very exciting hope you've enjoyed this soldering saturday if you liked the video please thumbs up please subscribe to the channel share my videos around that'd be awesome don't forget to um, check my links below to follow me on twitter facebook and instagram and until next time catch you later bye